When a convicted criminal is sentenced to die, there is always an opportunity to speak their last words. Many of us wonder if they will ask for forgiveness or tell their families that they love them. Most seem to do that, but occasionally there are some strange last words spoken right before the execution. Today we will have a look at some of these final words spoken by the criminals themselves. Jeffrey David Matthews was indicted for the 1994 murder of his great uncle after he and an accomplice robbed his home. His execution was postponed three times, twice by the governor of Oklahoma to further investigate his claims of innocence, and once due to the controversy surrounding the drugs that they were going to administer to him. The execution was carried out in 2011, and his final words were, I think that governor's phone is broke. He hadn't called yet. George Apple was convicted of first-degree murder for killing a police officer, although little is known about the actual murder now. He was sent to the electric chair in New York in 1928, and he's more known for his infamous words he delivered. Well, gentlemen, you're about to see a baked apple. Robert Charles Towery was charged for murder during a 1991 robbery. Before strangling the victim, Towery injected battery acid into him. The victim had loaned money to him on several occasions and used him as a mechanic. He was executed by lethal injection in Arizona in 2012, and during his last moments he apologized to the family and cursed his bad mistakes. His final words were, I love my family. Potato, potato, potato. The potato was a secret message to his nephew, which was a sound a Harley Davidson motorcycle makes when the engine is idling. It was supposed to mean that everything is okay. Aileen Wernos had a troubling childhood. Her father molested her when she was a child and then he hanged himself in jail. Her mother abandoned her and she got passed off to the care of her grandparents. By age 12 she was doing drugs, having sex, and then she became a prostitute. In 1989 she began a killing spree where she killed seven men. She stated she killed them in self-defense. The movie Monster was based on her life story. Florida sent her to be executed by lethal injection in 2002. Her last words were, I'd just like to say I'm selling with The Rock and I'll be back on Independence Day with Jesus. June 6, like the movie, Big Mothership and all, I'll be back. James French murdered a driver who picked him up from hitchhiking in 1958. While serving a life sentence, he decided that he didn't want to live anymore, but he was too afraid to end his own life. So he ended up killing his cellmate to compel the state of Oklahoma to execute him. They sent him to the electric chair in 1966. His last words were, there's nothing else to say. But his last words to a reporter were quite different. How about this headline for tomorrow's paper? French fries. In 1978, Robert Alton Harris and his brother Daniel Marcus Harris went to a fast food restaurant and abducted two teenage boys. They forced the boys to drive them to an isolated area where Robert shot them. The brothers then used the vehicle to rob a bank. They were found shortly thereafter in their home. Daniel served six years in prison and Robert was sent to the gas chamber in California in 1992. Robert's last words were, you can be a king or a street sweeper, but everyone dances with the Grim Reaper. In 1991, Patrick Brian Knight and an accomplice abducted a couple next door and locked them in their basement. The following evening, Knight blindfolded them and drove them to a secluded area and shot them. While waiting for his execution, he used websites and mail to ask for the best possible jokes he could use for his final statement. He received over 1,300 jokes and narrowed it down to five. He ended up naming several inmates he believed were innocent and then used his own joke in his 2007 execution in Texas. Not all of us are innocent, but those are. I said I was going to tell you a joke. Death has set me free. That's the biggest joke. I deserve this. And the other joke is that I am not Patrick Brian Knight and y'all can't stop this execution now. Go ahead. I'm finished. Thomas Grasso received the death sentence in Oklahoma for strangling an elderly woman with Christmas lights during a robbery. Six months later, he murdered an elderly man so he could take the Social Security check. Although his last meal was four dozen steamed mussels and clams, a Burger King double cheeseburger, half a dozen barbecue spare ribs, and two strawberry milkshakes, 
He was still unhappy about a substitution in his 1995 execution. I did not get my SpaghettiOs. I got spaghetti. I want the press to know this. Billy Wayne Coble murdered his estranged wife's parents and brother in 1989. In 2019, at age 70, he was and still is the oldest inmate to be executed by Texas since the death penalty was reinstated in 1982. His last words were, that'll be $5, take care. As he was finishing his final statement, his son, his friend, and his daughter-in-law became emotional and violent. They were yelling obscenities and throwing fists and kicking others in the death chamber witness area. The two men were arrested. Ted Bundy was sent to the electric chair in Florida in 1989. He kidnapped, raped, and murdered dozens of women across multiple states. Some experts believe the number of victims he had to be as high as 100. His last words were pretty simple, though. I'd like to give my love to my family and friends. Peter Manuel is considered to be Scotland's worst serial killer, and he was called the Beast of Birkinshaw. He killed seven to nine individuals before being arrested by the police. Shortly before being sentenced to death by hanging in 1958, Manuel attempted to stop his execution by means of insanity, but it failed. His last words were, turn up the radio and I'll go quietly. John Wayne Gacy is one of the United States' worst serial killers. He murdered at least 33 people in the 1970s and hid many of the bodies underneath his house. His last words show that he had no remorse whatsoever. They were, Kiss my ass. Peter Kerten was a German serial killer at a time when there were very few going around in Germany in the early 20th century. He killed at least nine people and then did terrible things with the bodies. He also drank the blood of his victims, which is why he was given the nickname the Vampire of Dusseldorf. In 1931, he was beheaded by the guillotine, and just before that happened, he looked over at the psychiatrist and said, Tell me, after my head has been chopped off, will I still be able to hear at least for a moment the sound of my own blood gushing from the stump of my own neck? That would be the pleasure to end all pleasures. Just before the blade came down, the psychiatrist replied, No. Richard Aaron Cobb was executed by lethal injection in 2013 in Texas. He walked into a convenience store with an accomplice and robbed it. They then took two female employees and one male customer and forced them into the car. They drove them to a secluded place and shot them execution style where they left them for dead. The only issue was only the man died. Cobb's last words in the execution chamber were, I hope that someday this absurdity that humanity has come to will come to an end. Then seconds later, he started to pass away. Wow, this is great. Thanks, Warden. Carl Panzerum was a serial killer in the United States at the start of the 20th century, and he said he killed 20 people in total. He was sentenced to be hanged in 1930 at the Leavenworth, Kansas prison. Just before the executioner put the cover over his head, he spat in his face. He was then asked if he had any last words, and he replied, Yes, hurry up, you Hoosier bastard. I could kill a dozen men while you're screwing around. Robert Comer committed a lot of serious crimes throughout his life, but in 1987, he killed a man who was camping next to him in Arizona and then took his belongings. He was executed in 2007 by lethal injection, and then he was asked if he had any last words, and he simply replied, Go Raiders! That was in reference to an American football team. Vincent Gutierrez was executed in Texas in 2007 after being found guilty of killing a man. He was trying to steal the man's car and then he shot the victim in the back. He apologized for what he had done and then finished off his last words with the saying, Where's my stunt double when you need one? John William Rook believed his difficult childhood was the reason he committed a murder in 1980 in North Carolina. For his last meal, he enjoyed 12 hot dogs. Just before they executed him by lethal injection in 1986, he thanked them and then said, Freedom! Freedom at last! In 1983, Charlie Livingston shot a woman in Houston, Texas during a robbery. When they executed him in 1997 by lethal injection, they asked him if he had any last words. Y'all brought me here to be executed, not to make a speech. 
James W. Rogers killed a fellow worker at a uranium mine in 1957. The two had a disagreement on how the scoop shovel should be properly greased. This escalated quickly and Rogers shot the other man. He was sent to the firing squad in Utah in 1960. When they asked him if he had any final words, he replied, I've done told you my last request, a bulletproof vest. Douglas Roberts was found guilty of kidnapping, robbery, and murder in Texas. He was upbeat and animated the day of his execution by lethal injection in 2005. When the time came for his last words, he said, I've been hanging around this popsicle stand way too long. Before I leave, I want to tell you all, when I die, bury me deep. Lay two speakers at my feet and put some headphones on my head and rock and roll me when I'm dead. Frederick Wood was sent to the electric chair in 1963 for the crime of murder and he also showed his dark sense of humor at that time. When they asked him if he had any final words to say, he replied, Gents, this is an educational project. You're about to witness the damaging effects electricity has on Wood. Clarence Ray Allen was executed in California in 2006 at the age of 76. He was found guilty of killing three people. At the time, he was very sick, and many people even wondered why he was being executed since he probably didn't have much time left. His last words were, Okay, it's a good day to die. Melvin White had murdered a child, and he was executed in Texas in 2005 for this terrible crime. Not too many people felt sorry for him as he was in his final moments. He did say that he was sorry for what he did, and then said, all right, Warden, let's give them what they want. Tory Twain McNabb killed a police officer in 1997 in Montgomery, Alabama. He was executed by lethal injection in 2017. He and his lawyers tried to stop it from going through by saying the punishment was cruel and unusual, but that failed. As he went to the gurney, he was angry and he flipped off everyone with both of his middle fingers high in the air. He then said, Mom, sis, look at my eyes. I got no tears. I'm unafraid. To the state of Alabama, I hate you. I hate you. I hate you. Mary Blandy was an 18th century murderer. In 1751, she poisoned her father with arsenic after he didn't approve of her relationship. She was hanged in 1752, and at the time she was wearing a dress. She was more worried about the people seeing her knickers after she was hanged than she was with the actual hanging. Not that it would matter much once you are dead, but she did tell the executioner, For the sake of decency, gentlemen, don't hang me high. Sarah Good was accused of being a witch in the Salem Witch Trials in Massachusetts in 1692 while she was in her 30s. She was one of the first three women to be accused of witchcraft. All 12 jurors agreed that she had to be a witch because she was lacking in self-discipline and was a servant of the devil. The only thing that she had really done was challenge the locals on their very strict Puritan laws. Reverend Nicholas Noyes was there at the end, and he tried to get her to confess to being a witch, but she refused. Her last words were, I'm no more witch than you are wizard, and if you take away my life, God will give you blood to drink. Twenty-five years later, Reverend Noyes died from choking on his own blood as he coughed it up. Finally, my last words on this will be to thank you for watching, and if you enjoyed this video, please check out some of the other ones that I've done on famous or infamous quotes.